Hello. In this video, we will look at the measure of dispersion for discrete data. We'll be looking at those using a frequency table and a step polygon. In this first slide, we will look at how to draw a step polygon. Hamish records the number of passengers travelling on 250 buses. A record of his results are shown in the cumulative frequency table. Here's our cumulative frequency table. We have the number of passengers in the first column and the cumulative frequency in the second column. Do be sure to make note that this is cumulative frequency. Cumulative meaning adding on each time. We're going to draw the step polygon. I've already set up the axes. Along the bottom axes, I have the number of passengers. And on the vertical axes, I have the cumulative frequency. Now I've set it up with a slightly unusual scale going up in steps of 30. And that's because that gives me 270 and I need to go up to a total of 250. Now, if one of these squares is 30, that's five small squares is 30. 30 divided by five lets me know that each small square is six. 30 divided by five is six. So each small square is six. That's going to be important when I'm plotting my step polygon. Let's start. 35 passes on the bus happened five times. So at 35, I want to go up to 5. Now that's quite challenging here because one of my small squares is 6, so I'm just going to go up to there. Be as accurate as you can on these scales. Now with a step polygon, I now go along horizontally to the next point that I want to plot. At 36, I go up to 12. Now again, that is two of my small squares, so I need to go up to the point where I've reached 12. That's 12 on my horizontal scale. Again, we go across horizontally. Now, up to 24. Well, 24 will be four of my small squares, so I go up to this point here. That's up to four small squares across horizontally to the next value, 38. At 38, I'm jumping up to 39. 39, that will be 30. That's 12, so a little bit lower than that. That's there. I'm going across again. And you keep going like this until all of the values have been plotted. At 39, where I am now, I need to go up to 65 up to 65. This is building quite slowly. At 40, right up to 98. So I finish the step polygon and I finish here. 45 would go up to 250. Now I have the step polygon, I'm going to show you how to use it to find the measure of dispersion of this discrete data. And in particular here, we're going to look at the interquartile range. Now, N here is 250. That's how much data I had. I'm going to find Q1. Q1 is a quarter of the way along. That's 250. Add one divided by four, that gives me 62.75. Do remember that's not my value, that's where I'll find the value. So on my graph, I'm going to go to the point of 62.75, and I'm going to draw a horizontal line across until I reach the graph, and then I can read that value. So my 62, again, it's quite difficult on this scale, but it's going to be just above 60. I go across and I reach the graph here at 39. I know that Q1 is 39. I'm now going to find Q3. 
3. That's going to be 3 times my quarter, because I need 3 quarters of the way along. That value is 188.25. And again, remember, that's not my Q3. That's where I will find Q3. Drawing a horizontal line across at 188. It will be around here. I see that I reach the graph at 43. From that, I can see that Q3 is 43. So my interquartile range will be 43 minus 39, and that value is 4. So that's reading from the step polygon. Just want to run over the same calculations to find it in my cumulative frequency table. The value of n here is 250. Q1, well I find Q1, I find the place for Q1 by doing 250 plus 1 divided by 4. Remember, another name for Q1 is the first quartile. That referring to a quarter, this gives me 62.75. Remember, that's not Q1, that's where I will find Q1. So this is my cumulative frequency, so I just need to look along until I find the frequency which contains 62.75. So here I had 39 values and now I'm on to 65 values. So this is where Q1 must be. And this is actually my data over here. So Q1 is 39. That is the value I had on the previous slide, but of course I would hope that's the value I have on my previous slide. Let's think about Q3. I find the place of Q3 by doing that calculation. That's one quarter. And of course, I need three quarters, so I can multiply that by three. That is 188.25. That's not my third quartile. That's not three quarters of along the data. I need to find where that value is. Well, I've got 176 values here. I've got 270 values there. So the 188th value must be here. And that's the data of 43. Remember, this was the number of people on the bus. 43 passengers on my bus. So the interquartile range, the IQR interquartile range will be the largest of those values, Q3, minus the smallest, Q2. That will give me 43 minus 39, which is the value of 4. That's a measure of how spread out my data is based on the quartiles. That's the end of this video.